Hello and welcome to the Run Testers, my name is Nick and in this video we're going to be comparing the Nike Air Fly 3 and the Puma Fast R2. So the Alphly 3 and the Fast R2 are two new carbon plate running shoes for 2024. They are both big bouncy shoes primarily focused on the marathon and they are both quite expensive. The Alphly is more expensive though. It is £285 or $285 whereas the Fast R2 is £230 or $260. Alphly is the lighter shoe. It's 220 grams or 7.7 .7 ounces in a UK size 9. The Fast R in the same size is 255 grams or 9 ounces. They both have an 8mm drop and the stack height hits that 40mm limit set by World Athletics at the heel. So the Nike, you've got an Atomnit 3.0 upper. It's a very open and breathable material with, with the tongue integrated into the upper for a booty style fit. You've got a fair bit of padding around the Achilles and a little bit of structure at the back there but not a lot. Then in the midsole you have Nike Zumex foam as you'd expect, the Piba based foam that's been used on all Nike super shoes ever since the original Vaporfly. You have the Air Zoom pods under the forefoot add a little bit more energy return to the shoe compared to just having Zumex foam alone. And the Alphly 3 has a continuous midsole as you can see without the cutout going uh, okay, across ways on the shoe. It just has a cutout lengthways down the bottom of the shoe to cut a little bit of weight then you've got a far shot rubber outsole good forefoot coverage very minimal stuff at the heel but it has proved quite hardy in my testing so far then with the puma you've got an ultra weave upper which is a fairly stiff and slightly odd material with a uh, puma's power tape added in to get a bit more structure onto the shoe speaking of structure you've got the heel fin at the back here which does act as a heel counter as well as looking you know very stylish and then you have a new midsole material from puma with the fast r2 it's still called nitro elite as with their other carbon plates super shoes but it is now an aliphatic tpu material rather than a piba based foam which puma says delivers even more energy return obviously got that decoupled midsole design which is uh, quite novel which shows off the carbon power plate running through the shoe actually extending beyond the front of the shoe that's another novel feature about the fast r2 the slight underbite you have with its carbon plate which puma says gives you a bit more leverage a bit more ground contact and the shoe has a Puma Grip rubber outsole with pretty much any of the foam that's going to come into the contact with the ground covered. You have obviously the cutout and the decoupled midsole, which reduces weight a bit. And there's also a little bit of cutout at the back of the shoe there, but pretty good outsole coverage. And it's obviously a very good outsole Puma Grip. We've praised it across all of the Puma shoes that have used it in the past, and it's very good in the Fast R2 as well. So when it comes to the fit of the two shoes, I've got a UK 9 in both, which is a US 10. It's the size I wear for pretty much any shoe across both Puma and Nike's ranges, and the fit has been good for me in that size. I've got enough room in the toe box in both shoes, maybe slightly longer the Puma than I necessarily need, so maybe it's a little bit longer than the Nike overall, but I haven't had any problems in terms of the length, and the hold's been good around the heel and midfoot. I've got no concerns at all with the Nike, in fact, that I don't love this heel fin on the back of the Puma. I think it does irritate my Achilles the way the whole heel is designed here if I use the shoe. You know, couple of runs in a row but that's not really what the shoe is designed for it is just used for the you know the occasional use the big race the odd workout but yeah I don't love that heel fin uh, I don't mind the way it looks but I just think it adds a bit of unnecessary irritation at the back of the shoe uh, for my Achilles anyway. So I've tested both these shoes pretty extensively this year and I've enjoyed running in both of them. They are big, bouncy, propulsive shoes that I do think deliver a really great fast ride. And while they are both, I think, geared towards the longer events, I've actually been impressed by the performance of both shoes over short distances. The Puma is bigger and chunkier even than the Alpha Fly. It is more of a cruiser. And it's the kind of shoe that when you get into a good rhythm with it, you can just power along and it feels really impressive, very fast and efficient. I've done some stiff and tough workouts in this shoe. Big progression hour moving from 345 to 325 pace and a, uh, a 10 times 1k at 320 workout on the track as well as a decent park run actually on Christmas Day and it's performed really well for all of those runs. I have found that even though it doesn't feel necessarily the fastest when you are in a good rhythm with the shoe you do move very quick and efficiently in it and I've not had any really bad runs in it at all like it doesn't feel the most natural it's not a great shoe for moving along at slower paces it's a bit disconnected and clunky and it still feels like that even compared to the alpha fly when i was wearing both shoes at the same time like the alpha fly has a smoother more natural transition this is a bit more odd but it works like you get a big powerful bouncy ride it's not the lightest shoe in the world but i don't haven't found the weight has held me back a lot over those short distances like like it's not necessarily the shoe i'd reach for you know instinctively for those short workouts but having done you know shortish reps at good paces it has felt pretty good for them but i think it certainly feels better when you are cruising along like when you try and do fast accelerations or stuff like that it doesn't feel as good it's a it does feel a bit odd like i say and it is a bit big whereas the alpha fly has that kind of top gear i think a bit more than the fast r2 like i've done a lot of long cruisy workouts in the shoe as 
as well. I did my first 20 mile of my marathon block in the Alpha Fly recently as well, which is first half was pretty easy, second half at sub six minute miling. And, you know, it's got that. You can just tap into a pace and cruise along very well. But I think the Alpha Fly probably has a little bit more of an edge when it comes to accelerating and upping the pace over shorter distances. I've done a 5K and a 10K race in the Alpha Fly and they felt really good. Or going down the track, I've actually done a very similar workout that I did to the Puma where I did 10 times 1K reps. But in the Alpha Fly, that workout, I think I was alternating 310 and 320 pace. And again, it just feels really, really good. At those paces, so 310 is you know my 5k pace, but it's also felt really good for me at marathon pace, cruising along. I think it's got a really fantastic amount of range for a carbon plate racing shoe, the Alpha Fly, because it is quite light for the level of foam and bounce you're getting here. And like I said, I was using both shoes at the same time for a short run. It definitely has a more fluid, natural feeling transition that gets you onto those air zoom pods, which deliver a lot of bounce. Whereas the Puma has a slightly less natural feel and a less natural look, but yeah, like I say, it has worked for me. The Puma, I do think it's a shoe that maybe requires a little bit more power put into it to get the same level of bounce out whereas the alpha fly i think responds very well even to a run like myself i have a very shuffly stride quite a high cadence so i'm not necessarily putting in as much power as bigger loping runners where i think the puma will excel even more i think the alpha fly has a bit more range and versatility i think it'll suit loads of runners just because of the way it has that fast transition that tippy forward feeling but also that booming cruisy ride if you are going to sit back and just roll along at more like marathon pace So verdict on the two shoes here that they are both really good carbon shoes and like a lot of carbon shoes right now I think the Puma's big problem is the Nike Alphalife 3 which I do think is the best carbon plate racing shoe available at the moment not actually available right now but I think there's a new launch coming soon and you know who knows when you're watching this video they'll probably be available to buy I think it just delivers the best of everything really you're getting that bouncy protective high level of foam underfoot for those longer events that helps you cruise along at the slower race paces like a marathon but you've got an aggressive feel a nice tippy forward feeling and a light nimble shoe if you are going to use it for short events as well like there are lighter more aggressive shoes like the vaporfly 3 but i think the outfly is up there of any 5k racing shoe whilst i think being the best marathon racing shoe which is what i'll be using it for mainly as a marathon focused runner puma fast r2 has impressed me with how it's performed at those shorter paces even over a 5k distance like park run but I think it's at its best when you are in rhythm, cruising along. It doesn't feel very nimble if you're going to go around a lot of corners and that kind of thing. So it does really suit the marathon well. And certain runners, I think you may put a bit more force into it will get even more bounce out of it than I do. But all around, uh, I just think it hasn't got the range of the Alpha Fly, and I still would pick the Alpha Fly over it for a marathon. So I think it's a really good shoe, but like so many shoes on the market right now, it's going to struggle to beat out the Nike uh, when it comes to that all-out level of performance. And if the price is similar, as it is in the US, I think the Alphalai is the clear pick. I think there's a bit more of a difference in the UK price, and you know, the Puma's a fun shoe to try, but once you are you know, already straying well over £200, you know, I would look to pay the extra and get the Alphalai myself, because I do think the level of performance is just a little bit higher. But some interesting stuff here with the Puma Fast R2. I don't think all of it works. Still don't like the heel fin. I'm not really sure about the underbite, but I think this foam is really good. Really interesting to see how that performs on other carbon shoes because Puma has quite a few in the range. But for now, in this versus, I'd be picking the Nike Outfly 3 over the Puma Fast R2. That's our comparison of the Nike Alpha Fly 3 and the Puma Fast R2. Let us know what you think in the comments below. We've got still got quite a few carbon shoes coming in right now to test, and we'll have loads more verses coming up with the Alpha Fly and the Puma. And yeah, loads of carbon stuff to come. But so do like, subscribe, and ring the little bell so you get notified when we drop a new video because you'll find out more about all these crazy carbon shoes that are coming out. Anyway, I'll see you next time.